In the August of 2023, some of the biggest leaders of the world gathered in this building located in South Africa. These leaders get together once a year to discuss things like trade and finance, especially with the focus of reducing their reliance on the Western world, which is led by USA. However, this year was different. They expanded their group by welcoming six new nations, taking their collective influence to a whole another level. Now, for years, the world has operated under a unipolar system, with USA being the supreme power. These leaders and the countries they represent are going to lead the world in the next decade or two, as long as they fix a few things. In case you're wondering, I'm talking about the BRICS. In today's breakdown, we analyze how the BRICS could emerge as a counterweight to the US-led world order and a significant challenge to the NATO. So let's get started. God's sake, this man cannot remain power. Russian heavy guns were firing at Georgian positions. American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq. So just as World War II ended, United States launched a mission to establish a new world order, one that is under its leadership. At the time, most of the major powers in Europe were in recovery mode, trying to rebuild from the devastation of the war. The US having emerged relatively unharmed seized the opportunity to assert its dominance on the world stage. The following years saw the establishment of numerous institutions such as United Nations, the NATO, and the International Monetary Fund. Simultaneously, the American dollar was established as the world's trading currency, further increasing US influence on the global economy. Today, US dollars represent about 60% of the reserve currencies in the world, with euro at 21% in the second place, which gives US and its allies a lot of power. For example, when US invaded Iraq, Russia or the other countries that opposed the invasion couldn't really sanction America. However, when Russia invaded Ukraine, USA and NATO were able to impose sanctions, all because of the Russian dependence on the American dollar for global trade. All of this makes this a very one-sided situation, when both the wars are equally unnecessary and unlawful. However, the global landscape hasn't always been unipolar. The Soviet Union and other major power that had survived World War II served as a counterbalance to the US throughout the second half of the 20th century. This arrangement is called a bipolar world order, and this act of balancing each other out is one of the most stable systems out there. However, a bipolar world is not without its drawbacks. There is also a multipolar world order. Different kinds of world orders exist and their impacts will be discussed in a separate video where I will be shedding a light on why there has been a increase in wars and conflicts across the globe in the last decade. Do subscribe to watch that video when it comes out in a month or so. When the Soviet Union fell, the world was left with one superpower, that is America, and that is all we need to focus on for this video. This is a time where you see America really trying to become the global police. And in all of this, it has NATO and UN in its pocket, something a lot of the upcoming powers in the world are not a big fan of. Now, it's highly debatable if going back to the Cold War days where it's a bipolar system, which is quite balanced, is a good option or not. But regardless to say, some countries would definitely like to gain global influence or at least have a bigger say in the global affairs, which they currently don't under the American system. The only thing that is even remotely capable of keeping USA and NATO at check are the BRICS. Now, what on earth are the BRICS? The term BRICS was first used by an economist in 2001 in a paper highlighting the combined potential of Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa, hence the acronym BRICS. However, it wasn't until 2009 that the BRICS nations formed an official platform. Since their initial coming together, the group has established institutions like the CRA and NDB. Both institutions are there to finance infrastructure and development projects in the member nations. And of course, all of this is with the aim of reducing the reliance on the Western world for their financial aid and their monetary system. Moreover, they've also been considering creating a gold-backed currency to lessen their reliance on the American dollar. Now, here's the thing. They've been meeting every year for over a decade talking about setting up a currency and making big plans. But not much has come out of it all. Some folks even call it a photo op and a jab fest. And that's exactly how I saw it as well till the October of 2023. And that is when things started shifting gears. 
It seems like China and Russia are now in the driving seat and are looking to make BRICS a heavyweight contender that can balance out NATO and the US. The group has added Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and UAE. On the surface, this may not seem significant, but it's a notable move. The inclusion of Iran positions the group as a more anti-American axis than ever before. The group now has two internationally sanctioned countries, not something one should be bragging about, but that's how it is. One is Russia for its war in Ukraine, and Iran for its attempts to develop a nuclear bomb and support for terrorist organizations such as Hezbollah and Hamas. And of course, there's China as well, which is aspiring to become the next global superpower and its goal to absorb Taiwan. The addition of Iran and Saudi Arabia is also a significant move. Both the countries being part of the same geopolitical group was unthinkable just a few months before this meet. Iran and Saudi Arabia are often described as the two poles in the Cold War that is happening in the Middle East. However, a peace deal was brokered by China prior to this summit so that they can all just come together and make a good old-fashioned team. A total of 40 countries showed interest in joining the group and about 16 others are actively applying and negotiating to join the group. Even though BRICS have made big steps forward, it still has a big and a tough journey ahead of it if it's ever going to compete with NATO. There are mainly four big challenges that stand in the way of China and Russia's push for a new world order. First, conflicting interests and agendas. The member nations of BRICS have different political, economic, and strategic priorities, which sometimes clash or compete with each other completely. For example, China and India have a long-standing border dispute and a rivalry in Asia, while Brazil and South Africa have different views on climate change and trade issues. These differences may limit the group's effectiveness in pursuing common goals. Second, the lack of institutionalization. The group operates mainly through informal and flexible mechanisms such as annual summits, ministerial meetings, and working groups, which means the group lacks a clear and consistent decision-making process, a binding legal framework, and a permanent secretary. It has none of those. These factors will most likely reduce the group's accountability and transparency causing the members to not really trust each other since there are no laws to abide by. And the third issue being competition from other actors. The BRICS group faces competition from regional and global actors such as the US, EU, the G7, and G20. For example, the US and EU may resist the BRICS demand for reforming the international financial institutions and the UN Security Council, while the G7 and the G20 may overshadow BRICS' role and influence in addressing global issues such as the pandemic, terrorism, or climate change. Fourth, and perhaps one of the biggest issues, is the internal development challenges. The BRIC members also face various domestic challenges that may affect their development and stability, such as poverty, inequality, corruption, social unrest, a whole list of them, all the way up till human rights violations. All of these issues might undermine the group's credibility and capacity to provide alternative models and solutions for global south and a new world order. And finally, the BRICS need to contend with the military might of NATO, which boasts the collective defense capabilities of 30 countries. While countries within BRICS like Russia, China, and India have significant military prowesses, they are yet to match the collective military strength of NATO. In conclusion, while the BRICS have grown by adding more members it still has a long way to go before it can truly compete with NATO. There is a likelihood that they will one day compete with NATO, but before that happens, it must deal with internal differences, create a shared strategy, and strengthen its combined military power. Ultimately, whether the BRICS can compete with NATO and make a new world order will depend on how it navigates the internal dynamics while taking on the external pressures. In the next decade or so, it's going to require a strategic plan, a strong leadership, and, and most importantly, unity among the member nations. As the world changes, it'll be interesting to see how the BRICS handle these issues and make its global mark. That's it for this week's video. I'll see you in two weeks' time from now. Please do subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you then.